Hi, I'm Graham Glenn, Assistant Provost and Executive Director for Teaching Learning Plus Technology at Stony Brook University. And this is Innovations in Education. In our show, we feature faculty and staff using innovative approaches to teaching and applications of educational technology that have had a positive effect on student learning. In this show, I'm joined by Margot Palermo, the Director of the Business Leadership Program in the College of Business, and we will be discussing using case studies in an interdisciplinary course. Margot, welcome to the show. Thank you, and I'm honored to be here. Tell me a little bit about the courses that you teach. Well, I am a business professor, so I'm teaching in this fall semester three business learning program uh, courses. Two of them are freshmen, and so they are honors because you have to have a GPA of a 3.5 or better to get into. It's an introductory business course. Okay. Then my senior course is honors ethics. So it's three courses in the fall, and, and then two of a different nature in the spring. They're larger courses, uh, information systems management that can be as big as 60 students per class. Okay. So my understanding is you use a lot of case studies. Can you define for me what a case study is? Yes, I think if I use the example of the honors, senior honors ethics, uh, I would bring a case to show good ethics practices versus bad ethics practices. And if we took Enron and we showed accounting manipulation, we would go through uh, various films and, and role playing in the class and discussion of the actual case. Then we might take an example of good ethics cases like a Tylenol uh, and how they had did a massive recall and uh, show the different ways that management handled the, the ethical issues at hand. So is a case study, is that a sort of a formal compilation of information about something that happened in the real world, that is sort of a single document, or is it that you just bring together newspaper reports, film, and so on, and say, okay, here's what happened, let's compare it with another thing that happened? Excellent question, because it's really all of the above. I'd like to think that that's the most academic way of looking at a case. We've got wonderful programs, uh, for instance, at the seniors level, let me just keep it in this one course right now, yeah. we work in community service projects, which you could almost define as a case where we outreach to the community, to five nonprofit organizations. Uh, the students are in groups of four, and that's a form of case study, but what they're actually doing is working with a real life organization, bringing whether it's fundraising or awareness of an issue or uh, working on a marketing plan or a logo with them. So our cases can be as hands-on or as academic, but the point is the reality is in the classroom. Okay, and why did you move to case studies away from lecturing? Yes, and that, uh, question is a very good one. When you look to an audience of students and somebody is nodding off or sleeping, mm -hmm. it is heartbreaking um, for not only the um, sadness that there's no interest in what you're saying, but also the fact that learning should be fun. Right. We should all be coming to the classroom and enjoying that time together where the rest of the world sort of turns off while you focus on something. So I found that the way it was interaction and that what students brought answers to the, the case or the discussion we all got more from it. And I, I like to think too, sometimes they give me homework by asking questions about something that I, hmm, that's a really good question. We have a lot of aha moments uh -huh. where we'll go back and, and further understand the world in a real way. Now, do you select the cases or do the students have an opportunity to bring cases in themselves? I'm very open to bringing in cases, but I don't get that much, uh, uh, action on that part. I mean, I, I do open up to current events, certainly. We always have a current event moment in the class, usually in the beginning. So that's definitely dyna dynamic. But I have to have some curriculum for the students, and you have to reread or prepare your case. So with that said, um, usually I bring the, the okay. case. So you said you have to have some curriculum for the students. Yes, so I do. In planning this, you think about the what you want to achieve for your course right. and then you structure together a series of cases that illustrate those points? And very well planned actually. Um, let me use the example of my spring semester. I'll be doing two information systems classes which get as big as 60 students in each. Okay. So I've made an outreach to Cintas, the uniform company, to sponsor if you will or to be our liaison for one class and Brookhaven National Lab is our 
liaison for the other. And other than the exam and some of the discussion cases we do academically in the classroom, the students are divided into groups, and because it's 60 students, there'll be 12 groups, five, okay. five students per group. I was about to impress you with my math. I'll oh, that, that. I would let okay. you do that, too. <laughs> um, and then we'll, what we'll do, and it depends, of course, on the organization, but both organizations feel that three projects are enough. So there'll be four groups to each project, okay. all right, so that's 12, four times two is 12. And so what will happen is they will be then assigned a rubric okay. and a sort of uh, way to attack the problem, but they are then graded on how well they do it. And what's nice is the organization gets to see the skill sets of our students. There is a resume builder for the student. There is a reality case and situation that will be used in the workplace. So, and then I think too for us as a university, we're doing a lot of community outreach and connecting to the world outside of us. So all in all, that does take planning. So you, you talked about having business partners in your course. Yes. Do you, do you ever have guests come in and present cases of real things that happened in their companies? Oh, absolutely, because otherwise it doesn't have any applicability. I, I think that's essential. And uh, speakers have been Cintas and Brookhaven National Lab. Uh, I'd also like to say that on campus, we have an incredible amount of resources. I've gotten people like Philip Deschetti um, coming in to talk about IT and how our whole um, infrastructure is set up here at the university. So you bring the hardware software component mm -hmm. and the human resource component in a place that they understand Blackboard Solar. And so we've done that in the information systems class. In our business learning program, uh, we've brought in Target and we've brought in um, uh, other people on campus to help the freshmen learn, so it's very much um, informational for them. Now you're also, I believe, partnering with other programs within the university, oh, yeah. writing and rhetoric and so on. So these are sort of interdisciplinary, or probably more correctly, multidisciplinary mm -hmm. courses. Tell me a little bit about how that's structured now. Well, works. I, I have to say and give a lot of credit to our Dean, Joe McDonald, because he's really um, taken a, a hold of a program called this Leadership Program, where we collaborate with other courses to make a uniform message, and especially in business where our disciplines are um, collectively what business is all about. Mm -hmm. So what we do at the freshman level is we uh, collaborate with writing and journalism. So it's business writing and journalism. Three separate courses. Okay. So you are getting your, your uh, nine credits, if you will. But we've made the curriculum intertwine so that in the end you've got one report. This is at the freshman level. It's a business report. I could get in the detail of it, but I'll keep it simple for now. That we will then put on an e-portfolio format Okay. It will be a bit of a calling card for the student going forward. And so this, this three course uh, network um, gives them the writing skills to make the report. I give them the business skills to, to have the content. And journalism gives that current event and exposure to media. Um, tell me a little bit more about the community service component. Mm -hmm. um, you're, uh, the students do projects with companies? or This is another work? great source of pride and all of this really is first time running at the senior level at, at freshmen. So um, like everything we have kinks but we have many more successes from this semester. The Career Center mm -hmm. and, and another, I mean Mariana Savoka, Ursula Zelensky, I mean what Zaluski, what a wonderful program they put together because I literally go to them, they give me five nonprofits that are receptive to students coming to them. They've pre thought projects. Okay. They've even helped me with rubrics. And so all I have to do is sort of show up with my students in groups, although it did was a summer in planning to make sure it's a running start in September. Right. Because the students only have from September to December to make a serious contribution from public service announcements, as I said before, the fundraising to um, logos and marketing plans. Uh, and I'm so proud to say that so many of them have connected in such a way that they're continuing through spring at no credits. Mm -hmm. So this service learning, it, it, the Career Center on campus will help you make the connections with people who'd be interested in using the services of your students and giving them practical experience. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I think they'd cater to different disciplines too. Um, mine is ethics, so community service, social responsibility is a natural fit. Okay. Um, it may be that another sort of way to package it for another discipline would make some sense. Okay. You talked about 
portfolios, e-portfolios. Tell me a little bit about how you're using them and why you think they make a difference. Well, there goes another credit. And I mean, it is truly, we're all a team. It's, it's the honest truth. Carol and Sophia of the Writing Center is who's really spearheaded our freshman level. Because we, we're just starting the semester. I mean, literally next week, we're all registering and getting up our final reports mm -hmm. for this particular semester onto e-portfolio. Uh, and there is a grant we're sort of working on to um, take this to a more sophisticated level through the whole College of Business. Okay. Um, with that said, uh, it's a new journey. Um, stay tuned, and I hope I answered your question, but uh, it's a little new to all of us how we're going to incorporate it. But essentially, they're taking their final reports, publishing them in an electronic format that other people can look at. And right, and it's timeless, excuse me, but the, it, I think the most important thing is we lose our blackboards. Um, you know, we do, all the material does expire or gets deleted eventually. This is something that will stay with the student. It's a form of their resume. It's their calling card mm -hmm. through life. And through the Faculty Center, we're going to be supporting that and driving that agenda university-wide a little bit stronger. Excellent. Good. Okay. So, if a new instructor came to you and said, Margot, what would be the quintessential tip that you could give me as a, as a teacher to, to start with? Well, first of all, you have to feel honored to feel that season because I think every day and every semester is honestly a new challenge. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, you never feel quite experienced, if you will, which is a good sign that you're growing. Uh, but my one tip would be, I think it's true of so many things, put yourself in the shoes of a student. This is your clientele. This is your, um, uh, who you want to embrace in a, in a journey of learning. What would interest you sitting on the other side of a curriculum? What would uh, make it a really exciting class to come to, a, a semester that you really loved, and in the end, something that you grew from? And so I would say, you know, put yourself in the other role of sitting there, and that's where I think I turned away from the lecture. I think the lecture and seeing people sleep during mm -hmm. a lecture was, hmm, something's not right. Okay. So you're doing a lot of neat things. What haven't you done that you'd like to do? I think you know my, my goals in this next year uh, are to perfect the process uh, because the rubric of working with outside organizations, if you will, and rubric because academia is grade oriented, mm -hmm. uh, our, our outside community is not, they're results oriented, is tying this to be, to better together okay. in a formula that you know, the win-win mm -hmm. is a little hard for all right now. I've got mm -hmm. to better gel that. And as students become seniors, it's very important that we transition them from uh, from this orientation towards achieving the goal, the, the grade, to the orientation to I really need to have skills that are going to work out in the workplace. Absolutely, and that you can uh, uh, articulate in a way quantifiably of what you've accomplished with your four years of mm -hmm. academia. So I think it's uh, that's the goals. Margo, thank you very much for being on the show today. And thank you, Grant, for having me. You're welcome. So if you have any additional questions from Argo, please feel free to post them on the blog on the TLT website at tlt.stonybrook.edu, but we'll also post the direct contact information from Argo. I'm Graham Glynn. I look forward to seeing you on the next exciting episode of Innovations in Education.